I'm reading an abridged version of the end of a short story, Solitude, by the Czech author Felix Tever, dating from 1908. Its heroine is Teza, a rich middle-class widow. At 35, she feels herself on the verge of old age. Becklin, an old friend and neighbour, proposes marriage to her. He is also rich, an aristocratic Austro-Hungarian parliamentarian. Teza is inclined to accept his offer, but puts him to the test. At her request, they visit a remote mountain estate of Peklin's, where Teza renews acquaintance with Faninka, an orphan girl who had been charitably taken on for menial work by Peklin's mother. Young Peklin had educated Faninka beyond her station for his own amusement. And the reader guesses he is the father of Faninka's eldest son. Against Faninka's preference, as Teza discovers, Peklin had passed her on to be married to his farm manager. In this extract, Teza and Peklin are returning from this visit. When Teza and Peklin entered the carriage to leave the mountain estate, a long, uninhibited look in Faninka's eyes was resting on the master as he wrapped a warm blanket around the feet of his new queen. It will be cold. Fasten your cloak. Here, in the mountains, the mist falls early. His voice had the unmistakable sound of tender care. Faninka was standing by the carriage in a light dress, her limbs as if crippled by the cold. And suddenly, there was something extinct in her eyes. Diana, Peklin's superannuated hunting hound, was tied up to prevent her running after the master's carriage. She began howling in agony. In her canine voice, there was something of human despair. The coachman spurred on the horses and they rode out of the courtyard accompanied by Diana's howling. Twilight pressed down on the landscape. The sky was yawning in pale helplessness. It lacked the strength to cast streams of light onto the earth, although the last gleam of the sun was yellow and phosphorescent in the west. Mist began to creep over the dark waves of the hills. When they drove into the forest, Diana's howling could no longer be heard. She has bad manners, old Diana. Why then did you not shoot her? I cannot shoot any of my hunting hounds. It would make me feel awkward. I am tender-hearted. Is that so? It sounded a little mocking. Dark nocturnal shadows wound their way into the forest. Both Teza and Peklin felt the need to spin the thread of their thoughts in that utter silence, which was broken only by the monotonous trotting of the horses. He was musing. Had Teza noticed, or had she not? The question went back and forth in his mind. She is sensible enough not to have prejudices. But do females always have prejudices in matters such as this? They do indeed. But a woman's prejudice will always condemn only another woman. It will justify a man. But some uncertainty was still oppressing him. He reached out to find Teza's hand. It was not there. She was clasping her cloak to her breast with both hands. And then the image of Faninka's dark eyes floated into the darkness of the forest before him. That woman loved me slavishly. 
as only a simple female soul is capable of loving. The memory lulled Pecklin into a pleasant state of inactive half-sleep, similar to the state that he usually experienced in pleasant digestion after a good meal. Teza had other thoughts. He is well versed in putting out of his way things he no longer needs. How skillfully he does it. Diana tied on a chain. Faninka passed on to the farm manager. He would have felt awkward if he had shot Diana and simply walked away from Faninka. And he is well able to summon up whatever he needs. She was now perfectly clear about her necessity in his life, but she was not flattered by it. A woman does not wish to be merely needed, she wishes to be loved. With a quick sidelong glance, she, she searched for Peckleen's face in the semi-darkness. A smile was meandering through the thick network of wrinkles around his eyes. She guessed well that he was remembering Fanenka's devoted love. Should she play the coquette with him, stir her up to passion, and then kick him away and plant her foot in the back of his neck? Fanenka would be avenged. Like lightning, this thought flashed through her mind, and her heart was thumping a little. But the lightning was a sting extinguished as quickly as it had appeared. For what purpose? It would only fatigue her. It was not worth her while. They drove downhill out of the forest. The mist was gathering over the countryside lying below them in the valley. Its tattered threads lay in the alders by the stream, and further down the valley it lay like a great, thick, grey shroud covering the contours of the landscape. After a while, some lighted window in the landscape glowed, as if under a veil. See, the housekeeper has lit the lamps in the castle. I had almost forgotten. I have invited the parish priest and also the revenue officer for the evening. It is my custom to play cards in the evening. She smiled in silence. It is my custom to play Grieg on the piano in the evening, she thought to herself. Ah, these long established customs of ours may well clash with one another. And where then is solitude? There. He waved his hand towards the far end of the valley. There, far away, a light glimmered in the mist, like a jewel buried in the dust. Solitude, solitude, my freedom. Something within her was exulting at the sight of the solitary light. The carriage came to a halt. I am home. Her voice sounded impolitely cheerful. She jumped out of the carriage. The door of solitude slammed shut behind her. He rode back to the castle. She is very private. Perhaps she is too sensible. A mist of doubt enveloped him, and through it the mournful farewell howling of Diana seemed still to be crying in his ears.